Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. Well, today I thought I'd take a look at used motorcycle prices. Specifically, if you're thinking about buying a used motorcycle or you want to sell one, where do you start? So I just picked an example of a Yamaha FJR 1300 ES sport touring motorcycle. They've made these bikes for years and years. They've remained pretty much unchanged since 2014 through the current model of 2022. So I thought, you know, let's go through it as an example. How do I figure out uh, if I'm gonna buy one of these things, what it should go for, if I wanna sell it either privately or trade it in, what are some of the resources I could look at to kind of get a halfway decent idea of what these things go for? So first of all, a new 2022 Yamaha FGR 1300 ES goes for about $18,200. Back in 2014, this bike was a little over $16,000. So adjusted for inflation, uh, that bike would be about $20,000. So they've actually uh, been pricing them below the rate of inflation, uh, mostly because this model is, it's a great model, but it hasn't changed hardly at all for many, many years. It doesn't have the latest fancy electronics, doesn't have a lot of rider aids aside from ABS. So it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward motorcycle. So I like to go to NADA for motorcycles. We can see the original list price was $16,890 for the 2014 model year. Low retail, which includes bikes that are in pretty rough shape, is around $7,700. Average current retail is around $10,200. So I also like to look at Kelly Blue Book. Typical list price for our 2014, according to Kelly Blue Book, is $8,600. Then I look at the typical trade-in value to kind of give myself a range. We're looking around $6,000. So another resource I like to look at is Cycle Trader. And you can do searches for different radiuses from your location or nationwide. And I like to do this because you get a lot more motorcycles to sample the prices from. So here's a 2014 with about 23,000 miles on it, it's $8,500. Looks like they've added a top case. There may be some other extras. And let's look at one with a lot of miles. It's actually priced higher at $9,000 at 100,000 miles. So, so I think they're asking too much for that bike, but we'll drill down here a little bit more. These motorcycle prices are mostly a function of the location and not so much mileage, but you do have to account for mileage in a, in a general sense. So obviously the 100,000 mile motorcycle has been ridden pretty regularly, probably uh, 10 to 12,000 miles a year. You'd want to check the maintenance records. It's probably been well maintained. These motorcycles are very reliable. But again, if, before I would buy a motorcycle with 100,000 miles on it, it'd have to have sp spotless and complete uh, maintenance records. Then we come to one here that believe it or not, has 309 miles. Looks like they've upgraded the saddle to a Corbin seat. They've added heated grips, um, 309 miles. I mean, that's nothing. If you look at what they paid due for this bike in current dollars, it's $20,000 plus sales tax is 22. Uh, but they're asking way too much money for this. I mean, you might say to yourself, well, man, it's like a brand new bike, uh, a bike this old, it's actually a problem to have so few miles. I'd rather have a bike that I think had been ridden low to average amount of miles per year versus ultra low or basically having sat for years and years and years. The first service interval on uh, Yamaha's is 600 miles. So it probably still has the original factory engine oil in it. Uh, the brake fluid's gonna need to be changed. The tires are eight or nine years old. They'll have to be replaced. I don't know what happened to this person, you know, if they had health issues or other family situation, but clearly they bought the motorcycle, they got it all ready for touring and, and didn't do anything with it. Um, to me, this bike would need a minimum of, of $1,500 in maintenance, new tires, possibly a rebuild of the brake master cylinder due to corrosion that might've been picked up in the brake fluid from moisture in the air. So. Not exactly a cream puff. Uh, again, I'd much rather have a bike that's been ridden, you know, thousands of miles on a regular basis. It's chances are it's going to have new tires, new fluids, uh, other things that you want to verify. So uh, it's 
rough for this owner. I mean, I think a fair market value for something like this would be maybe $7,500 if you wanted to take a chance on it. A bike with this low miles would uh, have potential problems with uh, leaky engine seals. I'm, I'm not a mechanic, uh, more of a shade tree mechanic. So you true mechanics out there, please let me know what you think. Would you even touch a motorcycle that has sat around so long? Even something as reliable as a Yamaha motorcycle? Please let me know in the comments section. And so just to get some other ideas for comparison, here's a 2017 Yamaha with 17,000 miles on it. It's being sold by a dealership. They're wanting almost $16,000 for it. That's way too much. But it gives you an idea. I mean, relative to the 2014 where they're asking 12.5, I mean, they're still asking way too much on both of those bikes. And then uh, final data point goes something like a, you go to something like a 2005, which is pretty old, uh, still $4,500. So if uh, you've got a bike that is still solid, it's been maintained well, the mileage isn't too crazy, in this case, 67,000 miles. I mean, you probably can get a really nice, reliable bike for 4,500 bucks or, or a little bit less, actually. So I like to have all those numbers at hand if I'm looking to buy a bike or looking to trade one in or looking to buy one from either individual or a dealer. Uh, I would use this information, let's say I was interested in that 2017 from a motorcycle dealership. I would use this information. I'd probably try and get that bike for around $12,000 myself. Certainly wouldn't pay close to 16 for it, but as we know, uh, times are a little bit crazy. But, you know, going on Cycle Trader and other websites like that, you can identify very comparable bikes to what you're looking for at much better prices, and you can even arrange shipping and still be a lot of money ahead compared to paying what a local dealer may want to charge you. So good luck out there. I'd be interested in your thoughts, but this is sort of the process I go through when I'm thinking about trading a bike or buying one. So thanks for watching and please stay tuned for future videos.